Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about some of the important interview questions for NumPy when used for data science. This is part two of the series NumPy for data science and also one of the lectures under Python for data science. Now going forward, previously we discussed about the different functions that NumPy provide for data science, creating NumPy arrays using lists, using a range, using zeros, ones. We talked about the dimensions, axis, indexing, slicing. We also talked about random number generation using the leg legacy random state generator versus the bit state generator. We talked about basic NumPy operations, statistical properties, sorting arrays, concatenation, adding new axis, modifying the same. Now, getting started with some of the primary exercises. Before going forward, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do subscribe now to stay on top of your data science journey. Also, I would recommend you to solve these questions yourself before moving on to the solutions. Let us proceed. The first question is create a vector with values ranging from 10 to 49, where 49 is inclusive. So this is very simple. You might we have already discussed about it that a range is the function using which we can specify the lower bound and the upper bound. The lower bound here is inclusive and the upper bound is exclusive. So since we want to take up to 49 include 49 we had 49 plus 1 so that would be 10 to 50. Now, this is very clear very simple next is find the indices of non-zero elements from a list 1 2 0 0 4 0. there could be multiple ways to do this we will discuss about the way to do this in numpy so first of all we convert this list to a numpy array using np.array Next, there is a function named as where in NumPy, where we specify a condition. The condition is op operated element wise. So we want to check whether an element is greater than zero. Okay. Here we are considering only positive. Ideally, it should be not equal to zero since we want to have non-zero elements. It could also take negative. Now we take the index zero from it because it returns a list of list. So it we will take the indexes corresponding indexes which are 0 1 and 4 adding a border filled with zeros around an existing array again there could be multiple ways to do the same you could run a for loop however using numpy we do not need to run any for loop we can directly slice the corresponding numpy array and modify it so we create a numpy array of ones with shape 3 comma 3 the, the shape is just taken randomly next up we specify we consider all the rows and for every second column why every second column because we want to take the first column that is the zeroth index column then we want to skip one column and take the next column since the size is here 3 okay so we set it to 0 same thing we go do for rows if if for any chance the shape would have been different say the shape would have been 4 comma 4 so here we would take a jump of 3 okay hope this makes clear next up, what is the result of the following expressions 0 multiplied by np dot nan okay it would return nan np dot nan equal to equal to np dot nan this would be false we cannot have a logical operation with nan it would return nan Minimum of np dot infinite and np dot nan. See here we are having infinite as a minimum value. Np dot nan minus np dot nan would again give nan. Multiply a matrix of dimension five cross three with another matrix of dimension three cross two. So we take two random numpy matrices and we use the function matmul. We could also use the add add operator the add operator which looks something like this so the operations would be same like a add b you can use b dot math or you can use a add b these two are same next up find common elements between two numpy arrays so we take two numpy arrays we have np dot intersect 1d since these are 1d arrays we take 1d how to find the most frequent value in an array? 
most frequent value. We take a numpy array of integers, randomly created numpy array of integers. We want to count the frequency. So while counting the, we count the frequency using np.unic and we return the counts. So it would return two values. The first would be the value itself and the second correspond to the number of times or the frequency of that value in the numpy array. We, very simple, we just index the corresponding value with the most frequent. So np.argmax count and the corresponding value. So one is the most frequent here as you can see. How to get n largest values of an array? n largest values which means like if you sort the array in descending order you take the top n elements from it. Okay. So we again create a randomly generated numpy array. We arg sort it. What, what does arg sort do? Arg sort sorts the indexes. It will specify the indexes in ascending order okay <clears throat> we take the reverse of this index sorted r sort r sort values and choose the n top n from the last okay so these were some of the important numpy questions hope you enjoy and hope you learned something new see you in the next lecture again if you haven't subscribed yet do subscribe to the channel it keeps me enthusiastic and bring, allows me to bring more valuable lectures for you. See you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.